All right, let's talk about services. Now, we, we uh, introduced services, the idea of services, uh, when we were talking about React, as, um, as a single place where you modularly, uh, um, it was a single place of manipulating data, right? As opposed to uh, a, a, you know, every component or every, every uh, JavaScript file uh, dealing with its own set of data. Uh, instead, it, we, a, a better approach is to have a central place that has the responsibility of manipulating the data. And that's its own responsibility. It right? doesn't care how it's going to be rendered. It right? doesn't care where it came from. Right? Its only responsibility is, is dealing with data. You know, adding to the data, retrieving the data, uh, uh, modifying a piece of data, removing a piece of data. You know, the, the basic CRUD operations of, of, of uh, dealing with, with data. Um, and, uh, and we implemented several user, uh, uh, services right, for, for uh, our assignments that dealt with courses and modules and whatnot. Uh, and, um, and we were using a, uh, an, a design pattern, the, the singleton design pattern. Uh, well, at least on the server side, we were using the, the singleton design pattern. Uh, not quite as effectively on the client side, right? Because it was not supported by the framework, right? We, need to, we needed to kind of implement our own implementation of that. In Angular, it's slightly different. In Angular, uh, the, uh, the singleton pattern and, the, and many other design patterns are, are uh, natively supported by the framework. Right? So for instance, such as uh, being able to create a, an a, a service right? that, uh, that has a singleton that can be shared amongst the entire uh, framework, uh, that can be injected, that, you know, that can support inversion of control, uh, and, uh, and, it's, and they're very, very easy to, to, to implement. Uh, so so as, a, as, a, as, a, as an example, uh, here we have three components, right? the profile component, the register component, and the logging component. These are three components that they all have to deal with user-related data. Right? The register component presumably allows me to add new users. Right? The logging component presumably allows me to find a particular user. Right? And the profile component presumably uh, renders a particular user and allows me to perhaps update the profile of an existing user. Yes? Right? So uh, they all deal with this, with this um, uh, set of data. Right? And it would be unfortunate that each one would have to maintain its own piece of data. Right? Somehow they need to be sh able to share amongst themselves. Right? Uh, so a, 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 an appropriate way to do this is to have a modular a centralized place that deals with everything to do with user management. Right? So to do that, we're going to implement a user service, okay? very much like we, we, we did in, uh, in React, but now using a, a little bit higher level implementation uh, abstraction uh, by using the uh, React uh, framework that fully supports the, this idea of singletons and, and services and, and, uh, and modularization. OK, so let's, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's create a dedicated directory here that only has services. All right, so here's services. Uh, and in there, we're going to create a new TypeScript function uh, uh, class here that's going to be called user.service.client.ts. Okay. And we're going to uh, create a, a user service. So there has a, there's a class. This class is going to host all the CRUD operations that we want to deal with uh, users. Right? In this case, it's going to be hard-coded on the client. Right? But as we progress, uh, this will uh, talk to a, a, some remote uh, service, right? some, some remote middle tier that will talk to some database. Right? But for now, it'll just be some hard-coded data. Okay? That's going to live only inside of this user service. OK? Uh, the, um, the, uh, the data is just going to be a, a, an array of users, a hard-coded array of, oops, copy, uh. copy, a hard-coded array of users. There it is. All right, so we have uh, Alice, and we have Bob. And notice that uh, I'm already putting an underscore ID in front of this. This is uh, in, uh, in preparation for uh, we're going to be using MongoDB soon. And MongoDB, it's their primary keys by default are, uh, are underscore ID. 
Uh, so there, we have a user service. Now, this user service is going gonna, is gonna to maintain this data. And we want it to, to be the single point of, uh, um, of ownership right, of, of this data, a single point of, of, um, of responsibility. Okay. Uh, so to do that, we're going to have, we're going to declare it as injectable, meaning that anyone who asks for an instance of this, right, uh, they will be provided the same instance across the entire framework. Right? There will be injector in the constructor. Somebody's going to be able to ask for it in the constructor. And the framework will figure it out. Right? It'll instantiate, it'll find the instance, right? and it will provide it in the constructor whenever that component is instantiated. Okay. Right, so there it is. So uh, injectable was uh, imported. A uh, couple more things. If for it to be actually available to the rest of the framework, it needs to be declared in our configuration file as a provider, as a data provider. Right, this, this thing provides data. Okay? So to do that, in, the, in our uh, app module, there it is. Notice that there is a placeholder where we declare all our providers. Right? Anybody who ha is providing data needs to be declared. And that's how the injection, that's, that's how the injection magic works. Right? Uh, only if you declare it as a provider, then the injection uh, mechanism works. Uh, so we're going to uh, declare here our user service. There it is. Did it load it? Yeah. OK, it imported it. And now it can be injected. So for instance, in our login comp component, I can now ask, uh, in the constructor, I can now ask for that, for that uh, service. I can say, I want a user service, uh, sorry, private a user service of type user service. And it loads it. There it is. Right? Notice that I am not instantiating it. Instead, the framework is instantiating it for me. Right? And it reads my constructor and says, ooh, you want an instance of that. Right? Notice that it is not me who's handling this. Notice that the arguments, the order of the arguments, does not affect the results. I can change the, the order of the arguments. And this would still work if I, put, if I spell private correctly. Right? The, ar the, the order of the argument does not, does not matter. Right? So, so the, the framework. Is, um, is inspecting my class, is inspecting my constructor, and sees the arguments that, I, that, it's, uh, that I'm expecting, right? and uh, instantiates all these injectable services. And when it's going to instantiate me, the login component, it provides me the arguments in the right order of the correct data types. Yes? And all that is, is, uh, is, is part of. The, the, the support, the, the inversion of control support of, 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 um, of Angular. Right? And this is, this is you know, for those of you who have done, been doing Java or been doing .NET for a while, you know, this should be very familiar to you. Right? That's, these are ideas that have been around for you know, a decade or more. Uh, and they're finally making it into, uh, you know, these modern ideas are, you know, have, are making them their way into into you know, front-end development. Okay. Um, all right, excellent. So now I have user service. So in user service, presumably I should be able to now do things such as, you know, uh, this dot um, find user by credentials, right? Or I'm sorry, this dot sorry, this dot user service dot find user by credentials. Right, I can pass it the credentials, the username and the password, and presumably can iterate over the users, looking to see if anybody with that username and password exists. If it does exist, then I navigate to the profile. Otherwise, I don't navigate to the profile. Make sense? Okay. Uh, so anyway, so find user by credentials does not exist. So let's uh, let's implement that. So in the user service. We can implement that. We can say find user by credential, which takes us argument, username, and password. Right? And 
and and so we can we can implement we can say you know um, uh, we can say return uh, uh, users dot find find no this dot user users dot uh, find uh, so user and I'll return if the user dot username is equal to username and a user dot password is equal to password right something like that uh, user da da and so I'll return that right? find me a user who has that that the, that is equal to that uh, so on this side, presumably I can now find here that uh, um, uh, let the user be uh, this dot user, and this is what does it like uh, the identifier blah blah blah. Okay, so constant maybe, and here I can do maybe a console console log uh, user. Let's not navigate just yet. Uh, let's see if it finds it. Uh, what users do I have? I forget. Uh, we have Alice, Alice, and Bob, Bob. All right, so let's try that. So if we go here and we go back to login and we say um, Bob and Bob login, notice that it prints out the user Bob right, or Alice. Right, it prints Alice. Right, or uh, if I say gibberish, gibberish. Right, it returns undefined. Okay, uh, so so my my logic of navigating, I could say, I could say something like, you know, if user, then I do the route. Right, otherwise I don't go anywhere. Okay, uh, so this uh, you know, maybe something like that. Uh, so so for instance, if I if I do gibberish gibberish. I don't go anywhere. If I say Bob, Bob, then it navigates to a profile, something like that. Now, obviously, this uh, this uh, is all hard coded on the client. Uh, ideally, this would go out to a server. The server would check the username and password. Would come back with an object. If the object came back, then we would navigate. Right? That introduces another complication. That that's a would be an asynchronous call, where here we're doing a synchronous invocation to the to the function right uh, so but let's keep this in mind so everybody everybody okay they're still with me All right. uh, excellent uh, now one thing that we might want to do is pass an attribute pass an attribute perhaps the ID of the user that we found for instance right so one of the things I would like to be able to do is pass along the user dot underscore ID Right, you know, pass in the user ID, uh, and so I can show and display the profile of that particular user. Right? So if I log in as Bob, I want to see my username. If I log in as Alice, I like to see Alice's name. Uh, or if I'm a faculty, I like to see the courses that I authored. And if you log in, you see the courses that you authored. Right, and we can see different different information. Uh, so so to do that, let's take a look at that. Uh, in the routes. Uh, uh, let's see, where is the, um, I forget if we declared it in the, in the routes. Did we declare it in the routes? We did not. Right? We did not we, 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 so what we can do in the route, in the routes, right, we can say um, slash and then an argument. So you want to pass me something, maybe the user ID as an argument. Right? Uh, now you can pass me data right? as part of a path. And I'm going to be able to parse that ID from the, from, the path, par, uh, from the path, and then perhaps load the information for that particular user. Right? So let's do that. So for instance, uh, here, notice that uh, uh, login. 
Uh, oops. Uh, was it complaining? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Bob. And Bob. And notice that 234 is being passed as an argument, right? Because 234 is the path, uh, is the ID for, for Bob. Is it? I don't remember. Is it? OK. Uh, or if I, if I go back to login and I try Alice and Alice, right, the ID would be two, one, two, three. Right? So now in the profile, I can use that information. Right? I can use that information and parse that from the path. So let's do that. Uh, navigate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so we did that uh, in the in the um, user service. Uh, right, we did the user, the find user by credentials. Ours was a little bit nicer, right, because we're using filter instead of a for loop. Um, so yeah, we did this, right? We found the credentials, we passed it. Uh, now in the profile, uh, the route. Right, the route can have different values. It can change over time. And what we'd like to be able to do is listen for changes in that route. Right, if, that, if that route changes and the pattern somehow changes, I would like to be notified right, because I depend on that route, on that state of the route. Right? Uh, uh, so that, you know, so if, if, it's a different, if, I, if it's a different user ID, I need to know it's a different user ID because I need to re-update my, my DOM. I need to go fetch some other information from the server. Right? So I need to, be, I need to listen uh, for that. So to do that, uh, there is a service that takes care of that, of, of listening for the route when it changes over time. Right? And it's called activated route uh, service. Right? So let's, let's, uh, in, uh, let's load that in the profile component. It says, I want to listen to the route as it changes over time. Right? So the activated route can listen for that right, and, and notify me that something happened. Okay. Uh, so in the constructor, I can ask for an instance of an activated route. You can say, give me an instance of that activated route, because you're going to be listening for, the, for changes in the route. And I, I want you to notify me. I, wanna, I, want, to, I want to register a listener. Right? I want you to notify me. I'm going to give you a function that if anything happens to our route, you need to let me know. Right? Because I need to reload content if the, if the route changes. Right? Notify me. Okay. Uh, so to do that, we're going to do that, we're gonna do that in the, uh, in the uh, um, uh, we're going to implement a, uh, 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 an interface, which is pretty cool also, that we, we, we can implement interfaces now, uh, Call the on init. On init meaning, when it's like right after the constructor, right after the constructor, uh, the, the uh, framework can notify me and says, ah, uh, you, you just were instantiated. Uh, if you want to initialize yourself, this would be a really good time to do that. Uh, very much like in, in the React uh, component did mount. Uh, this is identical, right? It uh, keeps track of the life cycle of the component. Uh, also, when it unmounts, same thing in React, you can, you can uh, you can listen when the component is unmounted. Same same thing here. You can you can um, you can listen for those for those things. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is that when the component mounts or when it's first instantiated, we're going to subscribe to changes in the in the route. Right? If there's any changes, I want to be notified. Let me know because I need to do things. So to do that, we're going to load the init, the on init, and we're going to, oh, I already, oh, I was already. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, we, already are, we, we already were implementing the interface. By default, when you do an ngg uh, create uh, component, by default, uh, you already implement that, that interface. So we don't need to do that. We need to do that. Uh, so in the, uh, uh, in the ng on init, what we're going to do is we're going to take that route, activated route that uh, we, um, we asked for. I'm going to say this dot, oops, this dot activated route. Right. So the activated route has a lot of things about it. Right? There's, a, there's a lot of 
metadata about the route, the route itself. Okay, you, you, can, you can look at the, all the parts of the route. Okay. One of the things that you can, you can also uh, have as part of the route is all the parameters right, that make up the, 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 the path. In this case, we have one parameter, which is the user ID. But the path could be something fairly complex. It could have you know, tokens and parameters and tokens and parameters all mixed in. Right? Uh, so so the, this activated route it automatically parses the URL, right? and, it, and it pattern matches uh, all the values with the placeholders and the names that we gave them. Right? And it puts them, puts all these nice, all these parameters that are in the path, puts them all in a nice map called params. Right? So this params is a map of all the elements of the path that have placeholders. In our case, we have only one placeholder, this user ID. Notice the, the colon in front of it. Right? This says that this is a placeholder. It's called user ID. And so our, what our activated route is going to do is going to par parse this. And whatever value we have in there, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, or whatever, right, it's going to parse it and it's going to create a map. Part of that map is going to have user ID, colon, one, two, three, or user ID colon two, three, four, the actual value, the name of the token, the name of the placeholder, and then the value, the name of the token, and the value. Yes? So we can subscribe to it. We can say subscribe, meaning I want to listen to that. If it changes, because I could type it by hand, I could type one, two, three, two, three, four. I can type, you know, from the, com I, can, I can change that, right? At the, at the, if, I, if it changes, I want to be notified. Uh, and uh, and and um, and uh, it, when when uh, when when the path changes, when the path changes, it's going to pass me with all the parameters, the brand new parameters, and I can I can parse it. Uh, all the parameters are going to be there, in in including my user ID is going to be in there. Right now, let's do something silly, and uh, we're just going to, oops, uh, we're going to. Uh, do a console log uh, params, params, to see what's in there. Okay. Right. So, uh, so uh, there it is. Actually, see that? That's that's all there is in the params. User ID one two three. If I if I change this to be two three four, notice that it becomes user ID two three four. Right? So, so I have the information of the user ID being passed to me as, as a map, right? as, a JSON, as a JSON object. Right? I can use that. I can use that information to perhaps you know, go fetch the, uh, the user right? and, 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 uh, and, and load it here. Maybe I can declare a user object right? as an empty object. Uh, and I, go, I can go fetch the, uh, the user for that ID. And then, and then update this that user with that object. Right? I could do things such as um, I can I can say something like um, uh, you know, give me the uh, oops wait I can uh, go f grab the uh, the user service of type user service there it is uh, and what I could do here I can say this dot user service find user by ID. The ID is where? Is in params dot user ID, right? Uh, and I can say that this dot user is now that user that you found. Okay? And uh, we don't have find user by ID, but we can implement it very easily. We can go in there. So find user by ID would be something like uh, user ID as an argument. And we can say find. We can just copy this. And so this would be find from this dot users, find where, uh, where user dot uh, underscore ID matches the user ID that we pass as an argument. 
So find me the user that matches by ID. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, and uh, and in the profile, to render it, in the profile we can say render the user uh, username. Presumably, right? So let's uh, two three four. And it's not rendering. Why are you not rendering? Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, sources. Uh, we can uh, navigate down. Use a service source app uh, services. Use a service. Put a breakpoint here. Are we even getting there? Okay. Uh, user ID two three four. And users is one two three two three four. Hmm. Oh, notice this this uh, user ID is a string. Right? Probably is not matching with the with the uh, user, which is a, a number integer. So probably we'll need to convert it or parse it into an integer so that, uh, uh, or we could be lazy and uh, we can do just uh, a single or, or double, double equal. That's not a good idea. Uh, but let's see if this uh, gets me through my conundrum here. All right, there's Bob, okay? Uh, or if it's Alice, then it would be Alice. Right, so it would show and display the content for that particular user right, that, that would find. Uh, so a better solution to this might be to parse, to do a, uh, something like user ID is equal to parse int user ID. And then we can keep strongly typing this. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, Radix. Really? What's the radix? The zero? Yeah, zero is fine. There we go. Okay, so this is working again. So let's try it. So if I log in as Alice, right, it goes to Alice. If I go back to and I log in as Bob, right, I, I see Bob. All right? Everybody good? All right, awesome. 